So in our last um, tutorial, we had a look at uh, satellite motion and uh, the forces, um, gravitational uh, aspects and velocity aspects that occur when uh, satellites are in orbit around a larger body um, due to gravity. In this, um, this tutorial, I want to look at um, gravitational potential energy, and it does have to do with the motion of satellites. And there's something that we need to appreciate about satellite motion. So the first thing that I want to focus on is what actually happens with a satellite. So here we have a satellite. Let, let's take this first one out, out here in, at a larger distance. And what will generally happen is this satellite will be moving in an orbit. Okay. Apologies for my drawing. And every orbit that it takes it will move a little bit closer to the earth unless it's got some other kind of force which is keeping it out towards it remember the satellite is falling towards the earth and it will move like so maybe not so uh, quickly towards the earth as i'm showing in this example several rotations not just a few until it gets to that point and what will happen is as it's moving around in this direction or in this direction the gravitation gravitational pull and the gravity experience in the satellite that's increasing so what we're going to say with this example is we're going to have the mass of the earth which we know as 5.98 times 10 to 24 we're going to have the radius of the earth uh, given as 6.3 times 10 to the 6 meters. We're going to set this satellite like we did in our previous example. We're going to set it at a distance of 12, uh, 12,000 kilometers or 12 times 6 times 10 to the 6 meters and then as it moves towards the earth we're going to bring it in closer so that it's at 8 times 10 to the 6 meters and what we want to explore is what's actually happening in terms of um, the energy so the gravitational potential energy that could happen you've got to remember the further things are away from the center of a body so the further this satellite is away from the earth the more potential it has to do work as it gets closer okay the potential to to do work becomes less but that is transferred into kinetic energy and the satellite speeds up so what we want to do is we want to explore what happens when we set this satellite at 12 times 10 to the 6 meters 8 times 10 to the 6 meters we're going to give the satellite the same uh, value of uh, 2.5 tons okay and we're going to work like so so what we want to do is we want to explore what what is the relative gravity that's occurring at 12 times 10 to the 6 now we we carried this out in the last example just by finding g on m r squared remember that m is the mass of the earth the larger body and we found this to equal 0.5. So we do our calculations as so. Remember make to make sure this value is in meters and that you square it. You must make that distinction. Sometimes you get problems that are given in kilometers and you must make that conversion. But we found that G asterisk was equal to 2.7, uh, not times, I'll just get rid of that, uh, newtons per kilogram. Okay, nothing new there. We're going to apply the same principle to when we set the satellite at 8 times 10 to the 6 meters, okay, from the center of the Earth. And we find here that uh, we're going to have 
you know, we carry out our calculations like so. Make sure we keep our constants and our values correct. Squared. And we, as we would expect, our relative gravity is going to increase, okay, because it's closer to the Earth. And we get 6.23 newtons per kilograms. I just want to mention here, or highlight here, that the altitude is really important. Um, the reason why the altitude is really important is because... Although we're using this value 12 times 10 to the 6 meters, that's the value from the center of the Earth, we must respect that when we, a lot of our calculations will uh, be giving values which are in terms of altitude. And that's in reference to how high the satellite is from the surface of the Earth. So we must be, if I go back, we must be always accounting for this radius of the center of the earth to its surface. Okay, so we have these two values. Now, how do we express this in terms of uh, potential energy? Well, what we generally do is we'll draw a graph and most graphs will be given as in terms of the relative gravity or the gravity that's been experienced and the altitude of the um, satellite above the Earth, okay? Now, sometimes they always, or they will uh, put it in reference to 10 to the 6 metres or they may put it in kilometres. You need to make sure that you're aware of that and you need to make the following conversions as you see fit. A lot of the graphs will put, if you like, the altitude at zero. I just want to make sure that we're remembering that when we have zero, this means the radius or the distance between, uh, if you like, the center of the Earth and the surface of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. And this needs to be accounted for with all our calculations. So if I return to our first example, or if I think about when I'm at the surface of the Earth, the gravity that I experience will be 9.8, okay? And from our two, um, two results here, we have two different values for uh, relative gravity at one point, sorry, I'll get rid of that, and at 1.64, okay, times 10 to the 6 metres. That's at 8, eight um, times 10 to the 6 metres from the centre of the Earth, okay. We had a value of 6.23. And at 5.64, okay, altitude, we had a value of 2.77. And the general curve of the graph will look something like that. And it may continue like so. It doesn't really go beyond zero um, altitude. And what we would expect, or if we're wanting to find how much potential energy is being uh, lost as we're doing it, potential energy being lost, kinetic energy being gained, what we look at is we look at the area in here. This area equals potential energy lost or Gained. 
And what I've done previously is I've done some calculations or, and these, these are generally approximations. You'll need to do the whole, whole um, method of counting squares and making those um, calculations appropriately. But what I found with my approximation is that this area was given by 16.6 6, times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter newtons meters per kilograms now i want to talk a little bit about this aspect the units here we need to appreciate that this energy is for each kilogram of mass okay so obviously if we have a greater mass there's more energy but because it's per kilogram which is given by the respective gravity we then need to make some calculations based on the, the value of the mass. So if we were to think about the energy gain, then this is going to be 16.6 .6 times 10 to the 6 times the mass of the satellite. And the energy gain here is 41.5 times 10 to the 9 joules. Okay, but that is not just energy gain, that's potential energy loss as well. Okay, um, if we wanted to then go a, a little bit of a step further and find, well, how, how much has the how much has the satellite actually sped up well we could have i'll just write here okay what we can use is we can use our kinetic formula mv squared half mv squared we know that our energy gain is 41.5 times 10 to the 9 and that's going to be half the mass of the satellite 2.5 times 10 to the 3 and we can resolve this for finding what the velocity is going to be and we get 5761 meters per second okay it's a lot of that, that that's a a high speed that is gained but you got to remember there's no friction the pull of gravity is very strong and as it approaches it's getting faster and faster the only thing that i would want you to appreciate going forward is sometimes you get these graphs which might be this might be altitude Um, and we could have two, four, six. We can have 9.8, 5, 4, whatever that may be. Oh, actually, we won't. Sorry, I'll just take this back. We could put this in terms of force newtons. And this is uh, times 10 to the 6 meters. And we could have some force, some crazy force like 5,000 newtons at zero. And then it's moving in a similar pattern to what, what we've shown before. And if we were looking at the energy gain or potential energy loss within there, we would find this area here. And this actually is EK gain or... EP loss and there's no need for us to do any calculation in terms of kilogram this type of graph okay accounts for mass of body so you can do a straight energy calculation because you know that work equals force by distance 
okay, which is EK equals force by distance. And that's exactly what we're finding in this area. And you can just do the calculation with having to resolve it without any um, use of the mass of the body. Okay, no worries. Thank you.